at a young age. I went to residency, played for the youth national teams, ultimately led me to UCLA. I can't imagine what it would be like to be a Bruin, but it seems incredible. And then somehow convinced my Nigerian parents, who are big on education, to let me go pro after my freshman year. I'm over your Google. Free running the box. I want to welcome you on the Athletes Podcast. Thank nah, you so much for, for, me, for coming on the show, it's driving here to you. San Fran, uh, in your neck of the woods, hometown. Yeah. Maybe just by starting off by telling the listeners who you are, your story. Uh, I'll dive in, interrupt rudely at times because you got a pretty cool one, and I'm sure you're a humble guy. So uh, let's Real dive quick, into great it. Great branding, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a Mobi Akugo, first generation Nigerian American. Uh, grew up playing soccer and basketball. Soccer just took over. Uh, fortunate enough to play at a high level at a very young age, which led me to experience a lot of different things um, at a young age. I went to residency, played for the youth national teams, ultimately led me to UCLA. And then somehow convinced my Nigerian parents, who are big on education, to let me go pro after my freshman year. And then uh, once that happened, um, that's when the rest changed. You know, I was able to go pro in 2010. I uh, spent 12 years playing professionally and then just recently retired. Um, outside of that, I've always been curious in business. So I started a frugal athlete, which you can see if this logo is not worn out right here. Mm -hmm. Looks um, fresh. I uh, appreciate that. And then um, outside of that, just like kind of doing stuff in the business development, strategic partnership space, oldest of four siblings, like to eat, to experience different things. But kind of low key. Yeah, I love it. Let's talk about that first because you brought it up early there leaving after your first like, first year of school, getting drafted, signing, playing professionally. Yeah. There's a story there because you had to make a promise to your parents yeah, around so education. <laughs> yeah, so if you know Nigerian parents, they're like, there's three paths you could take. Doctor, lawyer, engineer. Uh, I chose soccer player. So <laughs> uh, for them, and I'm first generation, so they moved here um, in the States, late 70s, uh, mid 80s. And it was to give, you know, me and my siblings, you know, a better life, you know, education, creates more opportunities. Fortunately for me, soccer wasn't, you know, like the end all be all. We didn't play soccer to, uh, oh yeah, pro is gonna be like the, the pathway. It just kind of happened. Uh, started out, you know, build friendships, you know, stay active, you know, build life skills. And then, you know, I just kept developing. And then it was like, all right, maybe you can get this college scholarship from this. And then went to residency and that's kind of when everything changed. Where it's like, all right, pro is gonna be a potential pathway. But still, you know, I went to college at UCLA, and then um, everything happened so fast. And uh, I remember someone telling, you know, my family, it's like, you got to strike when the iron's hot. So they were kind of new to this. It was like, what's Generation Adidas? Why, you know, you just got here. Why you need to go pro? Like, that's going to be there. Um, and I just told them this is, I mean, everything that I've done up to this point has led me to here. So why not pursue it? I'm going to continue my education. I promise. Like, they were like, that's the one thing. And it just kind of happened. Yeah. So I ended up. You know, going pro and then completing my degree and then not only completing my degree, getting my master's. How was difficult was that choice for you to go playing two sports growing up? I know probably basketball, you were like, oh, I'm not the tallest guy in the world. So yeah. that probably was a factor. But like, you know, everyone wants to be a dual sport athlete at school competing in multiple sports. But like, when was that decision for you to say, hey, I'm going to strictly play soccer? So for me, it was by force. You know, once residency came along, I was kind of like had to choose soccer by itself because growing up, it was literally soccer, basketball, soccer, basketball, basketball, soccer. And then once I got to residency, I didn't have the outlet to play soccer anymore. So that was kind of making that decision of, all right, I guess soccer is the pathway I'm going to choose. And it was to the point where soccer was kind of taken over anyway because the youth national team. So I started missing, you know, basketball practices, basketball tournaments. Um, but up until like I had to choose, it was soccer and basketball. And if if residency didn't happen, I would probably still playing be playing soccer and basketball. I wanted to be like the collegiate student athlete that would play both sports. Yeah, go straight from soccer to basketball. Um, but it didn't happen. The Bo Jacks and the Barry exactly. Sanders, right? Like those guys <laughs> were crazy. Uh, we just had Chase Griffin's episode on the Athletes Podcast. Shout out to Live, Chase, right? Yeah. QB for UCLA. I wanted to ask you because it's one of the questions I forgot to ask him. Like, how cool is it being a Bruin growing up in California? I'm sure that was probably something that was an idea for you. Maybe SC was on the table as well. Like, take us through that process. Yeah, so it was funny. So I was traveling around like from ages 13 to 17. I was gone, missing social events, birthdays, events because of 
soccer. So my parents, when it was time to choose a uh, college, they were like, you're staying in California. Mm. So uh, we broke it down to Stanford, Cal, Santa Clara, UCLA. And UCLA was the farthest away, but still the closest. Yeah. Um, so I always joke around about that. But from the standpoint of once you get on UCLA's campus, that's just a different energy. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you could attest to it. Um, the history of their soccer program at the time was, you know, I mean, not that it's gone away. You need to get back into good graces, but it was just, it was top. Like, if you wanted to continue to pursue a career in soccer, mm -hmm. UCLA was the school, at least on the West Coast, to go to. Um, great coach, great alumni base, great campus. Like, once you get on campus, it, the decision's hard to, like, say no to. Right. Um, so that was kind of good. And then on top of that, it had a great education as well, which is uh, what my parents were really after. So for me to choose UCLA, it was more UCLA choosing me instead of me choosing UCLA, and I'm happy I was able to be lucky enough to be in the radar. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be a Bruin, but it seems incredible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you said you were on the road from age 13 to 17. Were you able to afford going on the road for those years from the amount of chicken wings you sold prior to that? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, it got me in trouble with that one. But, uh, no, so fortunately the camps were all, you know, uh, compensated. We didn't get, we got it like per diem from the tr trip. Everything was paid for being a youth national team. Um, but yeah, that was my first dive into entrepreneurship. So when we go on these camps, I'd have a little bit extra money to spare because of uh, my my entrepreneurship days. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what were you buying with that extra cash, or were you saving it, it investing was, to wisely? To be honest, I was not, I was just like saving it. Like so, like when I go out, I didn't want to have to ask my parents for money. So basically, to pay for food and pay for different things, and then everything I wanted to do, like from an early age for Christmas, like you know, be able to spoil my siblings and stuff like that. Mm, that's yeah. cool. I love th that's a that's a very cool note. Uh, obviously, you have four siblings. What was the backyard like growing up <laughs> like living room yeah. soccer matches was nah, it was insane? really competitive we got a competitive group you know my immediate younger brother he always wanted to compete with me growing up that's just natural uh he ended up choosing basketball okay. um but then my s younger sister she's probably the most competitive of the group so like obviously we're not in the field anymore but game nights like card games it gets real <laughs> intense and then my youngest brother he's uh he's also really competitive too so uh, the backyards were good. We played a lot of hide and go seek, tag, ball tag, uh, soccer, everything we could do. Yeah, um, yeah, we we'd do it. Anything you dominate in specifically, just crush them. You, your uh, go to. I guess fitness, because they all chose. I mean, besides my youngest brother, he he plays soccer too. But I guess fitness. So like, we'll do during quarantine when we're all back, because I didn't. We were, our season was postponed, so I came back home. Uh, we'd work out every morning and uh some days i would choose like the long run as a workout yeah <laughs> <laughs> smoke them so <laughs> that was good but you know i kind of have an unfair advantage yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey that's hey, you gotta play to your strengths right exactly uh tell me about the mls cup i saw you were there checking it out how was it yeah so it was crazy never went to the mls cup as a player never got that far but to be able to experience it and support my former team uh, was an amazing experience that was the first time i was at lafc stadium as well and it was just a great show for MLS to show how far they've come and um, the trajectory of where they're going to go. Um, and for any neutral that was watching that game, I could definitely say you're a fan of MLS after that game. So mm. it was a great environment to be there as a representative of MLS, you know, do the appearances and stuff like that was good too. And I'm um, happy to go. And hopefully next year it's just going to be just as fun, whoever whoever goes. Right. What do you think about Messi potentially signing with Miami? Did you see that this morning? Yeah, so there's been rumors that's been happening. People have been having to keep their mouth shut. So we'll see if it actually happens. Uh, but, yeah, any player of Messi's caliber, and there's not many of Messi's caliber. There may be one other, yeah, right? If that. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> a, Messi's, his own, Messi's his own category. So this is what I wanted to ask. Because Ronaldo, Messi, like yeah. there's that banter it's back Messi. and forth. It's, yeah? Yeah, it's Messi. Okay. It's not, I don't yeah. want to say it's not close, but in terms of a complete player, you have to choose Messi. Okay. Yeah. He's different level. And the way he's been able to evolve his game based on his ability and based on like the trends of play during the time mm -hmm. uh yeah it's, he's he's a genius yeah hmm. it's unbelievable okay what are, what do you think about that ronaldo interview that went live like man you, uh, as a former player athlete like i'm curious your your I honest think, opinion uh, i think it was a leverage from him he's trying to leave okay. and so he was like all right if i do it kind of the quiet way it's not gonna work they're gonna mm -hmm. keep me on the bench so he did it, it the, he timed it perfectly he's yeah. 
did the thing, left for the World Cup. Yeah. So by the time he comes back, the situation will be handled. So obviously, you're not leaving yourself in good graces. Mm -hmm. He's a former, I mean, he's a legend at the club, both on and off the field. So you don't want to leave that bad taste in your mouth like that. But he was probably like, yo, I, I, he sees the window on the wall. Like for sure. The light at the end of the tunnel. And he's like, I got to milk as many years as possible Yeah. Um, for me to play. Right. I, I feel like I, I – I shouldn't say that I would be doing the same thing, but if no. I'm sitting on the bench as one of the best ever to do it, yeah, I probably want to keep playing no matter what. Exactly. Maybe it ends up being with the Saudi Arabian team <laughs> making 225 <laughs> million. Yeah. I don't know. Like yeah. that's tough to turn down. That's tough to turn down. Money talks, right? Dude, you saw a bunch of golfers go live golf tour making millions. Like I, I don't know. To me, do you think he goes for the money? It's tough because he's made so much right? already. He's got five hundred million in the bank at least, at according least, right? to according his to Instagram <laughs> follower count, be it whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think he tries to play for a big club one more year. Okay, one two more years, and then like that last big payday, either in China, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, um, I know there's rumors that U.S. market as well, but we'll see about that. Could you imagine a world where both Ronaldo and Messi are overplaying MLS soccer? Yeah, I could definitely see that, especially leading up to the 2026 World Cup. Who knows if they both have four years left in them. I think Messi, because he's a little bit younger, 35, he could play. But uh, Cristiano's like 37. Mm -hmm. Does he really want to play till he's 41? Mm -hmm. I mean, Cristiano, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, he's on the Tom Brady diet, uh, so maybe. But um, something that's undefeated is father time when it comes to sports. So we'll see how long. Yeah, you know. it, that's an interesting point that you bring up. Like, what were some of the strategies that you used as an athlete or you saw other people implementing for longevity, like nutrition, diet, yeah. training? I'm curious what you saw 12 plus years. Playing. Yeah, definitely. Nutrition is a big one, but also routine. So mm. like prehab routine, uh, post game routine. Um, and those are the f vital moments um, that people don't see. Everyone sees like the warm up before the game or like the, like the cool down after the game. But like, the actual, like the yoga midweek or the massages, the ice baths, the hot tubs, the saunas, the acupuncture, the, there's so many different like mechanisms that people really take a pride in. Mm -hmm. um, it really didn't transform for me until like 2015 when I went to Orlando uh, watching Kaka and mm -hmm. he had a personal like guy doing all this stuff for him. Like us, I mean, MLS, we use like what they gave us, but he had his own personal guy. And that's when I understood, like, there's levels to this. Yeah. And obviously, you know, he has the means to have a personal guy to invest in, like, having his own. Like, we have a team trainer. He has his, like, th individualized. I'm, I'm strictly here for Kaka. <laughs> I'm part of the team, but my r responsibility is Kaka. So that's when I was like, oh, yeah, there's levels to this. Like, yeah. I'm a pro, but that's one top 1% 1 pro. Yeah. How was that change, like, from UCLA getting drafted first round, like, it's got to be an adjustment going playing school to then pro responsibilities change. It's a job now. It's not. Yes. And so I mean, it's a job in school to some degree. <laughs> they, now they just started paying. But like, what was that transition like? No, that's a great, uh, great point. So for me, you know, being a Cali kid and then getting drafted to Philadelphia, yeah. playing people that had families, playing people that like this was their means to put food on the table. It was a whole different experience. Like you're getting paid first in the 15th or 15th in the 30th. And it was like, if you don't perform at the end of the year, your option is not going to get picked up mm -hmm. and you're out of a job. So it's not like, oh, we'll get them next year or, oh, that was a good tournament. Like, yeah, those are all great memories. But it's like, what am I doing to make sure I keep my spot, to take the starter spot if I'm not starting, to make sure that who was ever coming after me is not even thinking about taking my spot. So it's like you're in this team environment, but you're really not as well. Mm. And that's, that was like a big change for me. Yeah, you know, going pro. That would be tough because yeah. you got no one looking out for you, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like the, you're the rookie, yeah. and I was uh, the second ever draft pick for Philadelphia because we were an expansion team. So it's like, yo, that's all good and well, but the guys on the team is not like, oh, yeah, I'm not just going to give you yeah. my spot. Everyone's real helpful. It's not like conniving or anything, but at the end of the day, it's like – You're competing. You know, you're, exactly, yeah. you're competing. So um, growing up, you know, I've always been a starter, you know, never a question captain of the team but my first year I played 11 games total and I was just like my mind was 
going crazy. Mm. Calling my agent, like, yo, get me out of here. If they don't want to play me, it's fine. I need to go to a team that wants me. But luckily, I had the U20 national team, so I was consistently getting minutes, consistently playing. Mm -hmm. Um, But from the club standpoint, yeah, it was tough. Yeah, I can't even try and wrap my head around it. Do you have a favorite? Like, you mentioned Orlando, Kansas City, Portland. Any, like, specific areas that you had a blast playing in or stories of stadiums that you love to? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, So, first game ever was against uh, Seattle away. 40,000 people there, first game ever. Uh, we were already down 3-0 by the time I came on, but getting into that game was like a culmination of all of the sacrifices, all the drives my parents made, all those tournaments, all those national team camps, um, and really was like, oh, you're here now. So that was a moment I'll never forget. Um, Philadelphia Saturday night game, those are you know top notch. The Portland Sunday afternoon game, you know that was amazing. You know, opening up Orlando's first ever game, what a what an experience! Yeah. So many so many moments that you just don't take for granted, yeah. and uh, you really sit back and you're like, wow, what an amazing run! Do you have a favorite place you ever played in the world? Ever in the world? Ooh, favorite place. I ever. saw you're just in Italy, like Portugal was a fun place to play. Spain. Spain was a fun place to play. Okay. Um, I feel like it's something different over in Europe. There's yeah, a it's extra. just a whole different. It's a whole different vibe. Um, France was fun, but I would probably say those Philadelphia Saturday night games. Really? You know? Yeah. Philly fans. Yeah, Philly fans is something else. Did you become an Eagles fan, Flyers, Pittsburgh? Oh, just like by, yeah, by default. By yeah, default, Philly, yeah. Philly fans, Phillies, Flyers, Sixers, uh, Eagles, um, Union now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so. I saw you post a, an AI video on your Instagram, and it was around, like, Maybe it was on your Twitter, but it was around like we need more of this in the league. Yeah, of like guys with energy, passion, exactly. excitement to play the game. That's why I love playing in Philadelphia because they're like all about passion. Like you could talk mess, you can as long as you work hard, you know, you you show emotion on the field. Mm-hmm. I feel like I don't want to say we're too cute now with the way we play, but like be mad, be aggressive, show like yo, I'm here to like dominate, yeah. and compete. Um, I love that. Yeah, it's yeah. the best. Uh, I can't remember. I didn't actually see, but I feel like Ben Simmons probably got a rough intro. Yeah, back he definitely did. <laughs> did you see? Was it rough? Yeah, they booed him a couple times. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. I mean, Philly. I mean, they threw snow on Santa, so <laughs> like he he got it. He got it easy. To be fair, <laughs> I love it. Okay, you brought up a frugal athlete yeah. earlier. I'd love to talk about the inspiration. What start? What sprung that idea to life and how you've built this brand yeah so i uh, appreciate you giving me space to share so a frugal athlete essentially started because i saw the 30 for 30 broke documentary and uh, i was just naturally curious i was like all right there's not all athletes are not broke but when i did research it was like lebron james kobe bryant rest in peace tom brady serena williams and those like i uh, mentioned earlier like the top one percent not every athlete's going to be like that mm-hmm. clearly i wasn't in the sense of I'm a professional athlete, but I'm not making millions and millions of dollars. So it was more like, how can I find athletes that represent me in the sense of like, I could follow their career path. I could follow the career decisions that they're making. I could follow the money moves that they're making. And um, I wasn't finding that. So I was like, all right, let me create a platform to showcase athletes that I think are role models that don't fit what we're seeing on the broke documentary. Like while I was good and well to teach us, um, you can't use scare tactics to teach, you know, financial literacy and, you know, how to be smart with your money, how to be smart with your career decisions. And um, that's a, essentially how Frugal Athlete started. You know, I've always been interested in business and finance. So, uh, you know, just naturally kind of made sense. And then uh, needed to think of a name for the for the website, the blog, and people always used to call me cheap. <laughs> um, so I was like, no, no, I'm frugal. So now that's how a Frugal Athlete came about. So. Is frugal like one of your most used words in your vocabulary now? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. frugal is just like how to be efficient with your your career, how to be efficient with the money that you make. Um, yeah, frugal for sure is you know one of my used words. I think it's probably one of the most important things we've talked about on the 160 plus episodes that we've had now yeah. because of the fact that so many athletes, so many kids grow up thinking that they're going to make millions of dollars yeah. <laughs> and it's sunshine and rainbows and you never have to worry about financial f- worries exactly. afterwards, which is not the case. Not the case. What at all. is it like 0.1% of the 
couple of hundred thousand players that end up making NCAA sports actually end up playing professionally yeah. afterwards. Crazy numbers. I'm sure you have more stats that you could drop, but if you were to suggest to athletes how they should start thinking about their finances, maybe even in high school, NCAA with NIL, do you have pieces of advice you'd provide there? Yeah, most definitely. I think what I say first and foremost is you can't drink from an empty cup, so pay yourself first. A uh, story I always like to say is like when you're on an airplane, the stewardess or the no, hostess or the flight attendant will say, in case of emergency, you know, put your mask on first before you're helping others. And I think as athletes, you know, we want to take care of the people that took care of us, the people that supported us, you know, the different bills that we have. But if we don't take care of ourselves first, then we're not going to be able to do those things over the long haul. And that, at the end of the day, that's what we need to do. You know, we want to take care of ourselves long term because an uh, athlete's career only lasts for so long. So what uh, financial measures are you taking now to make sure that you're good um, for the rest of your life? So definitely pay yourself first, whether that's investing, building an emergency fund, you know, educating yourself, putting yourself in the right rooms, you know, because to create access and equity. Mm -hmm. And then after that, definitely understanding your budget. Um, your budget is some, one of the most simple things when it comes to financial literacy, but sometimes the simple things are the hardest. Mm. Um, so, you know, building out the basics and that's, you know, understanding budget, what goes in, what comes out, what expenses that you have, where can you like fine tune or, you know, double down or, you know, correct. Um, so th that's, th that's two. First is pay yourself first. Two is budget. And then understand for number three is, um, you know, active versus passive income. I think that's really important because as athletes, we're so used to earning. Um, we work to m make money. We work to make money. We work to make money. And then at some point, we're going to be done working. Mm -hmm. So what are ways that we can make money? You know, some people call it mailbox money. Some people call it passive income. Some people call it uh, money in your sleep. What are ways that you're going to make sure you make your money make money for you? Mm -hmm. A fourth one is a big one for athletes is income creep. So mm -hmm. as you make more money um, to make sure your expenses don't rise with it. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you're not, you know, not to reward yourself or not to increase your standard of living if you're you know coming from a lower level but making sure that there's a proportion between the income that you're making and the expenses that you have so mm -hmm. that you can build uh, money with that gap that you have um, that's a big thing and then I think another thing is stay curious you mm -hmm. know always ask questions whether it's people you're working with uh, people around you you know ask questions be naturally curious I think uh, my thing is like ask questions like a kid like mm. You know, when a kid, like a preschool, and you're explaining something, they say, why? And they say, why? And why? They ask them why multiple times. Like, make sure they dumb it down for you so that you can explain it to someone else. I feel like I don't understand something unless I can go to someone else and explain it um, in a, like, legible way. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'm still working on doing that right here <laughs> with this show. <laughs> uh, but it goes into a nice next point in that you have to use sports as a vehicle for the bigger vision. Facts. Which is something yep. you've brought up in the yeah, past. Do you want to elaborate definitely. on that? Yeah, I think, you know, if you let sports drive you, you are aimless. You have no direction. But if you can use sports as a vehicle to drive you to where you want to go, the destination is endless. Like, mm -hmm. you can go anywhere you want. There's so many things that you learn from sport. There's so many ways that sports can be, like, an engine for us as individuals to get to rooms that we may not have be privy to to learn skills about ourselves that we may not have realized that we have um, to understand like certain instincts that only sports can give you and if we can apply that to whether it's entrepreneurship business life social skills relationships um, I think you'll be better off for it and I, li I feel like a lot of times we just use it focus on the sport that we're playing which is can't is not the case right I'm curious I was doing some digging okay. on your, your social media. Uh -oh. and Don't get me in trouble now. No, no, no. No trouble <laughs> here. I'm curious how your memory is. There's a video, and it, you captioned it, the perfect depiction of preparation, teamwork, and a connected vision. Do you remember oh. what that video was of? Oh, good one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, um, yeah, so I was fortunate enough, my first F1 experience, this was before Drive to Survive, so I d hadn't watched it yet. Yeah. Um, the tire switch, yeah. the tire change. And, like, yeah, the fact that they got it and they were mad because it was, like, three seconds, I don't even know, point eight seconds Something off. Something ridiculous. Something ridiculous. And I was just like, yo, 
like you only see we only see the driver mm-hmm. but it's a whole and obviously the people that have watched and drive to survive now understand like the intricate details that go into f1 or mm-hmm. any sport for that matter but for this specific sport the tire change and like how everything's like up for that moment that's their like world cup that's their super bowl mm-hmm. and they messed up and it was like like yo that's that was yeah what a moment that's crazy i like going through i'm watching these I, i've always kind of been fascinated by car sports yeah. but never really dove into it R- roommate jordan maslin who's app developer for the podcast he's huge into f1 oh. and i can't really wrap my head around are you into it are you yeah, watching yeah. drive to survive yeah i'm, st- I'm like a season behind now but okay. yeah I, I watch it what is it about that the competitive nature the speed like what is it that draws you in yeah everything to be honest like because i was so new to the sport i happened to live in austin when i was playing in austin obviously we connected uh, prior mm-hmm. um and our stadium was on the f1 site so the owner of our team is now defunct was also the owner of uh circuit in america so we would always see it and then once the actual race came around we were watching and i was just like this is a big sport like mm-hmm. i had no idea so that's just naturally curious but from the standpoint of like all the details that go into it there's nothing like it yeah yeah from a data to analytics to the risk factors at play, to uh, the the money to the yeah to the leadership to the individuality of it, but also within the team's standpoint because you had the constructors' cup. Uh, yeah, it was it was it's amazing. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to get into it. So many people who have brought yeah. it up during these conversations, and I'm I'm gonna have to binge watch it this Christmas or something. Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay, you go foundation. Oh, uh, yeah, like perfect. What I did there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how it originally started. So it's, I love it, first yeah. off, before anything. No, like, I think the branding, like, so smart, the yeah. inspiration, like, yeah, let's hear it. No, nah, so yeah, all the, all, everyone's asking, how do you spell your last name? And I was like, okay, you go. And I was like, that's too catchy to not do something with it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's going to be the name of the foundation. So it's, obviously, it's like my last name was a play on my last name. But for me, you know, the foundation was just a culmination of, you know, we do different community events as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would always be like one off. So we'd come to this park or whatever, do a thing and never see him again. So I was like, I want to do a foundation where I'm like actually building relationships with, you know, the kids or the community that we're serving. So that's how it started. And then from there, I was like, all right, these are the things I'm passionate about. Soccer, obviously, increasing access to soccer making sure that kids aren't paying an arm and a leg to at least, you know, improve or get introduced to the sport. Uh, financial literacy, obviously with the frugal athlete stuff that I'm teaching, and then after school programs. So because growing up, I did a lot of after school programs because my parents worked nine to five, uh, sometimes nine to six. So if it wasn't for the after school programs, I wouldn't be just around, um, not knowing, not having like that safe space to like do work, hang out with friends, do whatever. Um, so that's kind of how it is. And basically our mantra is excellence through exposure, you know, helping equip some of these young individuals um, in underserved communities with uh, resources in those three categories. And, you know, we're not going to save the world one, uh, with in one go, but hopefully through our mentorship, through our participation, through our just showing up, you know, we can you know, make, some, make some change. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. And one of the other kind of post acronyms that you speak about is wealth yeah worship education affluence lifestyle team and health yeah anything come to mind when i bring that up no yeah and i can't take full credit for that so shout out to ryan pineda who like came up with that acronym um but i think when you think of wealth everyone just thinks like oh how much money how much money how much money and the great thing about that acronym is like it's a holistic you know so everyone asks people like how do you define success how do you define wealth and how do you like and there was a video i think i reposted it like yeah it would be cool to have all the money in the world but what about if you didn't know if you didn't have health or Mm -hmm. if you had no one to share it with or if you're always working your head's in the computer and you don't even have time to like really enjoy it so at the end of the day it's like identifying what wealth truly means to you because everyone has their own definition and then combining it with all those factors at play within the wealth acronym to make it you know synonymous with each other Mm. and i think that's really important as you know we're in we're in this hustle culture it's like you got to do got to do got to do and i feel like now it's starting to change where it's like no i'm actually cool with you know making this amount of money but i'm able to you know pick up my school kids from school every day or you know 
uh, yeah, I grind during the week, but my weekends are free. I get to hang out with my family. I get to do this. So I think people understanding what wealth looks like for them uh, makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, satisfied and having a work-life balance is yeah. important. And I'd probably add kindness to that. Oh, list. most definitely. Same with, same with that hat yeah. that you got rocking with the <laughs> Kind Humans Project. Exactly. You doing any with them or just rocking the Yeah, name? so shout out to uh, Adam and the Kind Humans Project. So this is actually a one, not a one-on-one hat, but these hats are no longer in continuation, so I'll always support them. Okay. Um, but they're still kind humans, you know, basically spreading kindness across the world through volunteer work, through highlighting people's stories, through uh, shared collaborations. Um, so they're doing a great thing. So if you guys check out kindhumans.org. That's with Lonnie Paxton too, right? Yeah, I think yeah, he's involved as well. Yeah, two-time Super Bowl champ. No big yeah. deal uh, for the Pats. Yeah. Um, yo, I'm going to put you on the spot here. But okay. What's one thing that people don't know about Amobi? Oh, um, I like to sing, I guess. Oh, okay. What's the, I'm not what's good. The jam? Oh, well, I'm if we play good. something right now, are you gonna? I'll vibe? do it. Yeah, I'll yeah. do. It. I'll, I'll join. I'll join a karaoke every now and then. What's the song? Are you gonna choose like? Um, uh, like my go-to karaoke song. Yeah, yeah. I just got tickets to his concert, by the way. No way. Uh, Who's that? Usher. Sure. Yeah. Oh, so he's doing the residency okay. in Vegas. So I was like, I got it. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. How far away is it? It's in Vegas. So oh, okay. Quick, Sorry. Yeah, hop in a skip. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Quick spend uh, the weekend. Oh, but it's in March. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I'll go there. For it's around your birthday, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I'm doing a whole like. Now that I'm not playing, I have time to like enjoy yeah. different experiences. A hundred percent. That actually brings up a good point before we wrap up. Like transitioning from playing pro sport to afterwards yeah pieces of advice you'd provide ways you would suggest transition like whether it's through workload entrepreneurship yeah anything there that is like prevalent information that you think people could use and apply yeah i would say if you're about to retire or need to retire give yourself an 18th month 18 months grace period okay. so you don't have to figure it out right away you might fall into something immediately um which all right perfect but give yourself 18 months to really like just choose yourself mm. like you know explore take some time off um do what you need to do and then after that definitely hit the ground running depending on but give yourself 18 months leeway where you don't have to worry about like where's the next paycheck going to come I, mean, I know not everyone's going to be in that situation but for me to having like i'm giving myself 18 months I could do this if I want. I don't have to. Yeah. It's really beneficial for me. Take some time off once you're done playing, but then like train like you're still playing just because those first 18 months, that's when people, I don't want to say let themselves go, but that's when you can get into some bad habits. So mm -hmm. like train like you're a free agent, even though you know you're in the back of your mind, you're not. Um, but other than that, really enjoy, you know, family time, friend time, you know, say yes to, you know, experiences and then double down and follow up on different connections. So like, people that you met throughout your career, you know, check in with them. And then I would say the biggest thing is let people know where you are you mm. know, or what you're looking for. So whether it's like, yo, I'm a Moby Kugo, I just recently retired. Here are things that I'm interested in. I would love to, you know, connect with anyone, you know, and the people that are serious are going to hit you up. And that's those are the people that you need to follow up, fine tune, create relationships, build, build rapport. And, um, that's probably where your business is going to come from, whatever you do in the next phase of your career. I love that. Um, Amobi, I can't thank you enough for first off coming on the show, traveling here to San Fran to oh meet yeah, with us. Oh, yeah, we had to make it happen. But also just for doing the work that you're doing with yeah, athletes. Sure. It's in line with our goal to educate, entertain, and inspire the next generation of athletes. And I can't thank you enough for coming on and doing what you do. The way we wrap up every show is we ask our guests what their biggest piece of advice would be for the next generation of athletes. Oh, okay. Is there one piece that sticks out for you, 12 plus years playing, now helping athletes, doing what you do best? Yeah, I would say fail forward. I think that's the biggest thing, you know. Athletes, we know about wins and losses. Um, we learn most from our losses, so fail forward. You know, if you continue to, you're not really failing if you're continuing to go forward in the process. So fail forward, don't be afraid to try stuff. Don't be afraid to open yourself up. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, as long as you continue to put one foot in front of the other and ultimately you're going to win at the end of the day. Yeah. So true. Wise words. Where can people find you on social media so they can continue oh, to yeah, hear most wise definitely. words? So, uh, at Amobi says on all platforms, um, uh, www.amobiacugo.com, at a frugal athlete on all platforms. Um, yeah, easy to find. I don't want to say easy to find, hard to reach, because I am <laughs> easy to reach. Just uh, send a DM or an email, and I'll get to you. 
and we'll figure out a way to collaborate. Yeah, I love that. Appreciate your help, man. No, Appreciate you coming definitely. today. It's this awesome. Was fun.